Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Time have a way of going, so I want you to quickly just look at your neighbor and say, are you ready to eat? Are you hungry? Ask him again, are you hungry? Now, I know some of you are talking physical food, but I know I'm among spiritual people, so I'm talking spiritual food. Amen. This morning, I am grateful and thankful for the year that I could see the 12th month. Amen. How many can thank God that you arrive at the 12th month? Amen. Lift your hand and say, hey, Alpha, Omega, beginning and end. Amen. But because of the constraint of time, I want you to enjoy the word of God. And when I look around, you cannot rejoice in emotions. You cannot enjoy, rejoice because you know someone. You rejoice because you know the truth. How many know when you know the truth, you rejoice? Say amen. And when you love somebody, you shouldn't have a problem telling them the truth. Amen. So I'm going to ask it very simple. Can I preach the truth this morning? Unadulterated, pure truth of God's word. Amen. Are there anybody who love the word here today? Come on. I heard you love the church. I heard you love the Bible. How many love the word of God? The word of God preached in the anointing of God. Amen. This morning, we're going to uh, be able to go into some scriptures. Um, you know, before I go, let me give you a story before I go in, because I love to make it clear. There was this farmer who was having some difficult time feeding his, his donkey. Are you there with me? So he, he fed, he was buying this corn, and keep buying this amount of corn and feeding the donkey. And the donkey had eating and just eating the corn. And he decided, you know, one day, I wonder if I can mix this corn with something and maybe the donkey would know. So he got some sawdust, a little bit of sawdust, and he mixed the sawdust with the corn and he put it in front of the donkey. The donkey just ate it and he enjoyed it to the point that he went and do his work. So he said to himself, uh-huh, probably this animal could keep on doing the same work and he could get more by doing less of waving corn. At the end of the day, he keep adding sawdust and putting less corn in the meal. Are you there with me, somebody? Do I read and spell? There came a time that the donkey was only eating sawdust. <laughs> oh, yeah. Spiritually, I am not here to put any sawdust on the things of God. We need the real thing today, amen. If you are ready for the word of God, say hallelujah today. Please stand to your feet and get ready. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs, and I, I'm going to preach on the rightly divided word of God. Could you all say Amen. The rightly divided word of God. In the book of Proverbs chapter 4, it says a tremendous scripture verse in verse 20 and 22. It says here, attend. My child, my son, attend. It means to give undivided attention. It means, my son, attend to my words. It means when the people of God can say, listen, I have come to church, yes, I see trees, I see people, but I want to see Jesus. Amen. When you begin to see Jesus, your problem become less uh, and the power of God become greater. Hallelujah. So I want to encourage you this morning, lift your hands in the air and say, I'm about to receive uh, the good seed. Uh, in my life. Amen. So the good seed is the word of God. And the word of God is going to be sown in good ground. Put your hands in your heart. It says good ground is waiting. Amen. Say I got good ground in me. Amen. Say, it's in, say in the name of Jesus. Uh, the good seed uh, will find good ground. And it will bring forth a good tree. Amen. I want you to bless yourself from the crown of your head to the soul. If you say, I am a good tree, yeah. Say, I am a good tree, yeah. I will bear good fruit. Say, amen. Lift your hand and say, I am a good tree. I'm planted. Uh, I'm planted by the rivers of waters. Uh, and I'm planted in the word of the Lord. God is transforming you. Uh, you are not a bad tree. You are not a bad seed. Uh, you are born again. Hallelujah. The word of God says, attend. Give attention. Give undivided attention to the word of God here this morning. Uh, I want you to know, I, I, I usually try to be excited about this but i have been humbled by this scripture verse because we need to know what was what is 
and what is to come. Amen. Are there anybody saying amen here this morning? So let's read this from the scriptures. The, the, the scripture that I would like to go is from Revelation chapter 1. Revelation chapter 1. If you have it, I'll just read this part and then we can go into Revelation chapter 1 verse 19. Talks about a very important scripture verse. It says, write the things which thou hast seen, the things which are, and the things which shall be. Now, I don't know about you, but um, when you go to the court, right? And I'm not condemning anybody. But do you know when the, when the judge comes in, everybody has to stand up? You remember that? It's a sign of disrespect. Now, wherever the word of God is, I grew up in a time. This is my, my first sermon I preached was in the year 1991. So you could guess how old I am. I was a kid. Amen. My first, my first crusade I preached was in the year 1992. Amen. So I'm not a novice. I know the word of God works. Amen. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. Write the things which are seen. Lift your hand and say seen. Say that which is in the past. Now say the things which are. And the things which are to come. Lift your hand and says I believe. The past is the past. And I believe whatever God has done for me is happening now in my presence. Say, in my present, I receive presence. I receive the presence of his presence. I am planted here this morning. I will not miss my timing. I will not miss my occasion. I will not miss my visitation. I believe that God has brought you here this morning and orchestrate this message that you can know your timing with God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That which was, say to me, that which was, let your neighbor and says, let the past be the past. Don't put me in the past. I'm here now. It's not what I have done, but what God has done for me. Amen. Let the past be the past. Some of you can't move beyond the past. Some doesn't neighbor say, it's past. It's gone. It's over. Amen. It's finished. Hallelujah. You know. And let's do the last quick verse and you can sit down. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 15. Could we have that? Amen. And it says, study to show yourself. Approve unto God a workman that needeth not be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Not the word of God, but the word of truth. Look again. Study for those study to become a preacher, those study to pray, study to show yourself approved unto God. A workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word. Father, I thank you this morning for rightly dividing the word of truth. And God's people says, be seated in Jesus' name. Amen. Have you ever grown in a family, maybe a large one or, or where you had to share stuff? Have you ever had to have to share stuff. Anybody wave your hand if you know what I'm talking about. You have to share. And uh, sometimes the sharing does not really look like the way you want it. Have you ever had that experience? Where your parents are supposed to share the chicken. And they were supposed to say equal half. But then the other half look bigger than your half. Can I say that again? Did I say it right? <laughs> Have you ever noticed that when they say we're sharing it equally and half and you keep looking at the other person, but how are yours looking a little bigger than mine? <laughs> how are your half looking like? Because mathematically, half is half. But sometimes, amen, we, in our mindset, we have this problem, and I make you smile, but I want you to know, the word of God Amen. There is no bigger half and smaller half. The word of God, it says in Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12, the word of God is quick, it is powerful, it is sharper than a two-edged sword, able to pierce and divide, cut asunder, meaning it's have a middle ground, and it's able to discern the spirit of man. Amen. Amen. Are you hearing me say hallelujah? <laughs> so the word of God must be rightly divided. Lift your hand and say rightly divided. Rightly divided. Say it again. Say rightly divided. 
I want you to be the kind of people that when you know the truth, it doesn't matter who say what, you know what the truth is. Amen. Amen. So Jesus himself had to be confronted with, with a lot of things because nobody could rightly divide the word because they couldn't understand the word. Amen. Because the Bible says he came to his own. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. The word made flesh dwell among them. The word was walking among them, but they could not discern the word. Amen. I might have an amen here. They couldn't. They couldn't understand the word. Now, for those of you who write, there are, there are something we call, if you read my books, and they read past the book, whatever book, you are going to read something from a writer, but you have something called perception. Preception is what you perceive what the writer is saying. So you have preception. I think he says this. I think he means this. I don't know what he read, but I read it and I think that's what he's saying. Amen. Are you getting me? But there's another uh, definition called conception. Conception is when the person who wrote the book know what he's talking about. Am I, am I hearing anybody here? You can't understand the Bible without the Holy Ghost. Lift your hand. You can't understand the Bible without the Holy Spirit. You can go all the theology. You can sit under the greatest feet and mind. You cannot understand the word of God until you know the author of the word. When you know the writer, when you know the author, you are able to say, I'm not perception, I'm conceptualizing. Amen. How many can lift your hand and says, I know, I know the word of God. You're like, oh, I don't know. Now, I say things not to, to, to create any tension with you, but I want you to know that in the course of reading the Bible, I had grown up with a very traditional church, and there were many, many areas of my Christianity that I had to, to re-examine because you can't take everything somebody says to be true. Come on, somebody. Amen. Sometimes our preaching was so passionate, but it was not word-based. Amen. Did anybody want to hear this here this morning? Are you there with me? Amen. Jesus had disciples in the book of Luke 24. Jesus is resurrected. Jesus has rose from the dead. The greatest event has took place. And don't you think the people closest to Jesus should be rejoicing? Don't you think that if they were really know who Jesus was, they would have been excited. They saw him walk on water. They saw him raise the dead. They saw him multiply bread and fish. They saw him calm the sea. And now there he told them that I'm going to be buried and on the third day I'll rise again. Amen. How many you know they, they should be the most excited people? But we see in Luke 24, two of his disciples, when they heard that he was risen from the dead, if you look at Luke 24, they were very, verse 33, thank you, sister, you're, you're with me, amen. Jesus joined the resurrected Jesus, comes into picture. Now, I want you to say, I want you to understand, because I need to preach this so that you will understand. There is, like there is in the Bible, if you don't see it clearly, you will see the Jesus who do miracles and the Jesus who, who touch and, and he's the same yesterday. But in the scripture, we have a shift from the Jesus who was the lamb to the Jesus who is a lion. Amen. I, I, am I going to preach here this morning? He moved from the meek and mild to the one that could slap and they could pull his beard and they could crucify him. And then when he rose again, he rose not as a lamb, but he rose as a lion. And he stood up and says, I am he that was dead. I'm he that was dead. So I don't pray. I don't pray to the lamb. I preach to the lion. Amen. I say it again for those of you hearing me. Could you believe that there is there's resurrection power when you hear this morning? Amen. Amen. So let's follow this. Let's follow this. Jesus goes and says, hey, what, why are you so sad? Why are you so, so? And they couldn't understand because in their mind, hear how they have Jesus. In the scripture, which I have the Bible, it says, it says, Jesus, they said, don't you know what happened? 
Jesus was a prophet. And we believe that this great prophet, he was doing great things and he will bring redemption and he will bring back Israel into the place of prominence and he's going to do this and that. But then they kill him and now look at it. All they could have seen was the cross. And if you could only see the cross, you're going to only be living a life of suffering and sadness. I didn't come to preach just the cross. I come to preach beyond the cross. Somebody say hallelujah. And anybody want to hear the truth? Lift your hand and say hallelujah. It's not just, you say, oh, at the cross, at the cross. No, no, no. It's in the grave is where I saw the light. I saw the light. I was in Israel and they carried me and they said, hey, you know, here is where King David lay. And here is the tomb of King David. And here is the tomb of this one. We went to Egypt. Here is the tomb of the Pharaoh. But when they went to the tomb of Jesus, now I don't know if you're hearing me. They said, this is a big sign says uh, he's not here. He is risen. He is not here. He is risen. Could you lift your hand and say hallelujah? What separates us? From all the religion is an empty tomb. Raise your hand. Did you get it? There were other great men who said great things. There's some people, philosophy, even Buddha and whoever, whatever. They said some real nice things. But they, when death came, it was over. When Jesus came, amen. Oh, death, where is that thing? Come on, somebody. We're going to lift it up. Help me, Father. Somebody say hallelujah today. Most Christians today, we have a problem of separating the Old Testament from the New Testament. Can I have a little time for that? Amen. In your Old Testament, you cannot live with an Old Testament mentality and expect to walk in the resurrection reality of who Jesus is. Amen. Now, I would hear people, they wouldn't like me, but that's okay. Because you know why? I'm not preaching old. I'm preaching with the revelation of God. Amen. Are you getting this? Say amen today. Let's, 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 let's understand this. That which was. Somebody say that which was. Say was. Search your scriptures and you will notice that there is a lot of past tense. And past tense means in God's mind. When God just finished a work, let me give you what past tense in God's mind is. It means in God's mind, it is settled, it is secured, it is finished, and there's no way going back there. I, I, I think I need to say it for those of you. So let me say again. Say it's secured, it is settled, it is finished. No, no longer going back there. Amen. We can't go to Old Testament. And I want to help you. Could I help you here this morning? Could you wave your hand if you want to hear the truth this morning? Oh, Pastor, why are you preaching so? Well, there's no sawdust in this. There's no sawdust. This is the word of God. Can we go into the word of God? Rightly dividing the word of God. Let's go into the, the scriptures here. The Bible says... In the first question is, how many of you know that when God speaks, he no longer speaks to a prophet or to an Old Testament voice. He speaks to Christ here today. In Hebrews chapter 1 verse 1 says, God in sundry times and in diverse manner, he spoke in time past to the people through the prophets. But in these times, he's speaking to us through his son who is appointed heir of everything. Hallelujah. If you want to hear from God, you cannot hear it through any other medium but through Jesus. Amen. If you agree, say hallelujah. How many of Jesus is the speaking of God? Amen. If, you, if it's not in Jesus, it's not in the Father. Amen. Hallelujah. So let's go into this as quick as we can because what happened is that what faith does for me is that when I know something is finished, when I know something is done, what I do is I take God, amen somebody, I take God's word in my spirit and I say, Lord, I'm battling my mind, but your word says it is done. And I will walk by faith. I will now hold on to what you say. 
and not what my mind say or people say because I want to do what you say. Amen. How many of you can lift your hand and say, he says, I am blessed, I am blessed. If he says, I am well, it is well. If he says, let the word of God be a reality in your daily living. Amen. Can you lift your hand and says, in the name of Jesus, I rightly take my place in the things of God. Are you ready? Are you ready? Okay, let's go into this quickly. Amen. The first thing you might understand is that the Old Testament believers, they were based on actions of doing. They had to do. They had to earn. If they don't earn, they, they, their whole mentality was do to get, do to get. Sacrifice, do to get, do to get. And they were conditioned in earning their blessing. They were conditioned by getting things from God, by how they attend church. And how I'm sorry to say to you, but that's what the Old Testament mentality was. It was doing to get. Amen. Yes. If they didn't do a good sacrifice, the crops will fail. If they didn't do this, they would get that. That was the Old Testament mentality. In Christ, in the New Testament, we don't do to get, we believe to receive. If you are a believer, you believe to receive. The problem today is we say we are believers, but if there's a court... That calls up people and give evidence. Most Christians, there are not enough evidence to convince people that they are believers. You get what I'm saying? Because we doubt so much. We get God, you said this. I, I'll tell you this. I'm standing here by faith and I'm taking God at his word. Amen. Amen. Listen, the Old Testament had the conditioning of people saying things like this. Let me just give scriptures. If that's okay with you. Is that okay with you? The Old Testament does what? It is good to read it. It is the scriptures that if you read the Old Testament. And you cannot find the revelation of who Jesus is. You missed it. The stories are not about David and Goliath. The story is not about how Moses split the Red Sea. The story of the whole Bible is his story. Amen. It is about his coming. His death. His burial. And his resurrection. Amen. How many know the story is the story of Jesus? Lift your hand if you hear me. Tell your neighbor his story is history. His story. It is his story. It's not about how, who, do what. So what we do is we have to rightly divide the word of God. Some say rightly divide. Let me go into this quickly. In the, in the book of, I'm going to jump. Is that okay with you? Is that okay with you? Okay, let's look at the Old Testament. There was a, turn to Second Peter. Let's go to 2 Peter quickly. Amen. 2 Peter chapter 1. 2 um, Peter chapter 2, I believe. Yeah, verse 9. He I chose and generation. Pastor Mickey um, said it this morning. Amen. Are you there? If you have it, say amen. I need to read it. Where is found? Second Peter chapter what? Two verse nine. Read it with me if you can. But you are. Somebody say we are. We are. Touch your neighbor. Say we are not going to be. You're not trying to be. You are. Say it again. Say I am. I am. What he says I am. You are. In God's mind, we present tense. You are. You there in it? But you are a chosen, a royal priesthood. Now, the word royal priesthood is a new concept that is not in Old Testament. Can I preach a little bit for you a little bit? In the Old Testament, there was a separate office for the priest and for the king. The king had to depend on the priest in order to have success. Are you there with me? Amen. What happened is that the, the king had something where we learn in the Old Testament had an authority of his word. Whatever the king says, the word becomes a reality. Amen. Amen. So the king had the power of the word and the priests had the power of sacrifice, making blood offering. And, and all, are you hearing me? So listen to this. The 
priest and the king were two different offices. There was a man who mixed it up. There was a guy who felt that he could have been both. But he was under the wrong teaching. He was under the wrong covenant. His name was Saul. King Saul, the Bible says, King Saul did what? When he was waiting for Samuel to come, he thinks Samuel is taking too long. And the people are here. Let me do the sacrifice. I'm king. I'm going to do the sacrifice. So the Bible says he went into the temple and he performed a sacrifice. When Samuel came in, uh, he, he says, hey, 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 that's not your job. That's not your work. And the Bible says God rejected Saul because he stepped out of bounds. Amen. Are there anybody here? Me here? But in the New Testament, somebody say New Testament, New Covenant, New Agreement, you are no longer under the bondage of a separate office. We have priest and king in one. I don't know if you're not excited about that. I don't know who that you're gonna be. You gotta be slave to the grave, or be brave and face the wave here with me. Amen. Don't be a slave tonight. Amen. Listen, let me give you some. It's a New Testament. What are, in Revelation chapter one? Um, verse 6, I believe, somewhere around there. Help me if you find it. Yeah, verse 6. Okay. God has made us. Read this with me. God has what? Made us what? Priests and what? We are now all operating under one. Wave your hand if you get in this. It says, I'm priest and king. I'm priest and king. God has made me priest and king. Which was, which is, and which is to come. Listen, you are right now a priest and king. Amen. What does that mean? Well, saints of God, right? People don't want to hear this thing, but we had to speak it the way God says it. Listen to me. Priest and king. What does the priest, what does we have? What, what gives you the power of the priest and king? Look at covenant. It says, now, because you are priest and king, your power is in the word. You have the use of the word. And you also have the use of the blood. Let me look at this side. I, I, I can't hear it. I say, listen, now that you are a priest and king, you could use the word and you can use the blood. Come on, sir. Now that you are a priest and king, you can use the word of God and the blood of the Lamb. Now that you are a priest and king, you could go home and use the word of God and the blood of the Lamb. The whole church could live here and say, hey, I, gotta use, I can use the blood and I can use the word because I am a priest and king. Amen. How many can say hallelujah today? Hallelujah. Rightly divided the word. Can you shout amen today? Amen. You have now. That's why we can say in Revelation said we overcome by because we being a priest and king. We overcome by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimony. Because we are a priest and king. We can now operate and say devil I don't have to run for pastor. I know who I am. I don't have to look for a ladder to see the father. I know who I am. Amen. Lift your hand and say I know who I am. Say it again. It says in the name of Jesus. I function as a priest and king. I lift my hand and says, it, I decree a thing. When you speak it, you believe it. Hallelujah. And you decree it and says, in the name of Jesus. I wish you just lay your hands on your, on, on your body and says, this body is a temple of the living God. It will not tolerate sickness. It will not tolerate malfunction. I am operating by the glory of God. I'm walking and talking in the glory of God. From the crown of my head to the sole of my feet. My name is not, amen, going to appear in any death certificate this year. I'm born again. Hallelujah. I wish somebody lift your hand and say hallelujah. I am who he says I am. I am rightly dividing the word. I'm operating as a priest and a king. Hallelujah. I'm not a slave. I'm not a subjected to the things of this world. Any man be in Christ. He's a new creature. All things are passed away and all things become new. I'm walking in holiness. I'm talking in holiness. I'm operating. Hallelujah. By the divine power of God. God in my life. Resurrection power is in my life. Lift your hand and say hallelujah. When I speak, when I speak, hallelujah. When I speak, hallelujah. Angels are ready here to engage my prayer. Hallelujah. 
Let the church raise up and rise up, rise up, rise up. Rise up in this place. Rise up in your spirit. Rise up. Amen. Tell somebody, go ahead. Go ahead. But talk me. Bury me. Laugh at me. Say, I don't look good. But God says, I am a priest. And I am a king. Hallelujah. Grab hold of revelation. Grab hold of revelation. Grab hold of revelation. Come on, lift your hand and say, hey, yeah, I am. Galatians chapter 3, verse 13. Galatians chapter 3, verse 8. So people go, oh, I need deliverance. I need deliverance. Pray for me. Let me tell you something. I've been doing Christianity for over 30, 40 years. Amen. And the biggest cash cow is deliverance service. Because we got money there. Sorry to preach the truth, but I'm rightly dividing the word. If I tell you something, would you believe it? Would you believe it? Let's read it. Christ had, had, not going to, had. Lift your hands at Christ had, redeemed us from. Get ready, say, it, say it. I'm not walking around with no generation because I am redeemed. I am taking care of all. Hard. Say with me, say hard. Hard means what? Past. It's done. It's finished. It's over. Say with me, say Christ had redeemed us. Look at say me, I'm being redeemed. I don't have no generation cursing me. I'm a new creation. I'm walking and I may not look it right now, but hey, let me tell you something. Have you, have you understood this message? Yes. Tell somebody and says grace. grace. Hey, we don't do it by works. We do it by grace. grace. What, you, what grace is? Let me tell you what grace is. Grace is God using his power and his ability on my behalf to do for me what I could never do for myself. Let me say it again. Grace of God is when God uses his power and his ability on my behalf to do for me what I could never do for myself. What I could never do for myself. Jesus did it. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. So I'm not living in my strength. I'm not operating in my wisdom. I'm operating in his grace. Hallelujah. You know what? You know, you know. Hey, hey. Oh, jeez. he got to get me. Let's lift our hand and say hallelujah today. Rightly divided the word of God. Stop eating the sawdust they're giving you. Stop eating this kind of lovey-dovey sawdust. Because a lot of people are tasting good. Have you ever eaten something we have called chili, baby? For the Caribbean people. They grate the corn and they love it with sugar, but they make you cough. Find out more. Anyway, that's what it is. We are living in a Christian world that we have something called a, a syndrome. It's called a needy gospel syndrome. I come to church. Lord, I need you. God, you know how much I'm going to. Stop it, please. You are already blessed. The Bible says First Peter chapter 1 and verse 3. First Peter chapter 1 verse 3. God has given you everything you need for this life in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Everything you need. How, oh, let's read it. Let's read it. Second page of 1 verse 3, I believe. Sister Wait, who is helping me there? Okay. According as his divine power, he had. Somebody say had. Given us what? All, what, 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 read it. All things that what? That what we ever need for living is already there. That's the word of God. You don't have to work for it. It's already there. Can you get up on this seat and say, I'm walking in this light right now. Walk in the light. Stand with me. Stand with me. Finish. Hey, walk in the light, neighbor. Say, neighbor, walk in the light. Stop praying for what is already yours. Just believe it. Amen. I could, I could go into so many scriptures, but I'm just, I'm just giving you. i got to stop here. How many you know the rightly divided word make you powerful? Amen. Let me give you something. Let me give you something. Just walk in it. Walk in it. Amen. Forget the past. There's a story that I'm going to leave and I'm going to stop here, Pastor Mickey. 
I'm going to hand it over. Amen. There's a story that says a priest, I mean, uh, 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 two monks coming down from the mountain. And while they were coming down, the younger monk looked at the older monk and he was admiring him. And they were all walking together. And as they come down the mountain, they came to reach a river. And in the river, they saw this wonderful river, but they saw a woman standing there and she wanted to cross the river, but she couldn't because she couldn't swim or whatever. So the monk looked at each other, but they have a, a oath that they can't touch women. <laughs> so the two of them and the older monk passed and, and he told the woman, he says, jump on my back, I'll take you across. <laughs> so she told the younger monk, keep looking and like, what's wrong? With this? They cross over. And the two of them cross over and they went on the journey. The woman dropped off on the side and they keep walking and walking and didn't say nothing. One week passed, nothing happened. They didn't talk at all, but it was on his mind. So the young monk couldn't take it again. He says, hey, I want to ask you a question. And we have a code that says we can't touch a woman. And the old monk said, what are you talking about? He said, you can't remember last two weeks ago that you took a woman across? And he looked at her and said, listen, I dropped off that woman two weeks ago, but it looked like you're still carrying she. <laughs> Some of the things Jesus already dropped off. Don't carry what Jesus already done. Give him praise and glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Did you enjoy the word of the Lord this morning? Give him praise. Hallelujah. Give him glory today. You are a good people. And you need the word of God to be rightly divided. Don't just go emotional. Stay on the word of the Lord. Lift your hands and just worship him this day. Pastor Jerry.